A heart-wrenching tragedy comes to a family's doorstep. 16-year-old Eric Cross is found lying dead on the side of the road outside his home by his inconsolable father. I don't remember ever seeing him cry before that. The whole town cries too, not only for Eric, but also for the blood of whoever killed him in a most horrific way. A very torturous, very painful death that he suffered. And when police can't find the murderer, townsfolk start whispering among themselves and pointing fingers at those suspected of being involved in his death. The rumors started coming in, or the stories started coming in from the street. Conspiracy swirl for 35 long years. It became literally an urban legend that was getting passed on from person to person. But all the tips and tales lead nowhere. We have a lot of information, but we just, we're always a little bit short of putting it together uh, enough that we could take it to prosecution. Still, Eric's case stays alive thanks to his younger sister, Jackie, who started a Facebook page for her brother. So people from Vicksburg started friending Eric, his page, um, but then people were interested in the murder. The Facebook page became a kind of clearinghouse for everybody's stories, rumors, tips, and other information about the case. They had a place to talk about it because all these whispers had gone on in the shadows or, you know, among <clears throat> small groups of people. But now all of a sudden, like, well, here's a place we can talk about this and how it affected us or be surprised that it hasn't been prosecuted. And it looks like Jackie's persistence will finally pay off. This conspiracy is, is, is falling apart as we speak. Uh, the brick wall that was uh, built with a lot of effort over the years is crumbling down. In a stunning new development, cops finally want to put rumors to rest for good. There could be imminent arrests in the decades-long murder mystery. It's just kind of a cloud hanging over Vicksburg that everyone wants to have cleared. Vicksburg, Michigan, a quiet village about 130 miles west of Detroit. A small community, agricultural, great school system, good people. Among those good people were the Cross family, who loved Christmas, fishing, and the other simple pleasures of country life in a nice, safe place for Eric and his younger sister Jackie to grow up. We were close growing up because it was just the two of us, just the two siblings. We had each other. That was the constant. Eric was a good-natured, outgoing kid who made a great big brother. He was definitely um, loved playing outside. He was very active. So probably most fun we had together was when we were exploring outside. Fun when they were younger, but by the time Eric is 16, his mind turns to other interests, like hanging out with his buddies, chasing girls, and going to parties. Your father said to police he was concerned that his son was hanging out with a bad crowd. Right, yeah, and, I, and that had been like a recent development, I would say only within the last couple of months before he died. And Eric might still be alive had he not gone to one particular party. He was um, getting ready to leave the house, and he was fixing his hair in the mirror. Jackie remembers it vividly. He had that really nice 80s hairdo, and the song, The Look of Love, was playing on the radio. It's the last time Jackie would see her big brother alive. It's like burned into my memory, like just saying goodbye to him. And what would happen that night would be seared into the collective memory of Vicksburg. A town in mourning for Eric, but also a town without pity for a bunch of teenagers who have been living under a cloud of suspicion ever since. How has the town reacted to you? They hit me. Next, the underage drinking party that investigators say set the stage for the brutal murder of Eric Cross and the discovery of his body by his distraught parents. And I thought, well, it doesn't look like him. It's probably not him. I don't think it is him. But finally, reality sets in. Eric's father said he heard the front door rattling in the early hours of the morning and assumed it was his son letting himself in the house. But cops say the front door was locked and Eric likely went back out into the front yard. But exactly what happened to Eric after that has remained a mystery.